Mr. Joe Perry and Mr. Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith. How are you? Hello. Oh, all right, how are you, Chuck? Great. Now, it, mu it must be, of course, a long, long time since you were in England. How long has it been exactly? Ten years? Nine years? About ten years. If ten. we were here last time at all? And, well, ten years. Has it been worth the wait? What have you been doing since you got here? <sighs> Interviews and TV and press and why we didn't come over here last month. And... <laughs> A lot of that. You know, on and on. All those good tourist activities. Yeah. Just the red light districts <laughs> in Germany. Now, of course, you're over here promoting your brand new album, Permanent Vacation, about which I'm going to ask you in a minute. But I want to get into some music before we relax and, you know, really talk. We're going to show the Run DMC video that you did. How did that collaboration first come about? Um, we were on the road. And Rick Rubin called us up from, you know, their producer and said, uh, the the guys are going to do it, you know, to walk this way, so why don't you drop into the studio? They sent us some plane tickets. Stephen and I went in for about six hours, cut the track. You know, we did, uh, I put the guitars and the bass on, Stephen sang it, and they, they wrapped it, and we left, and then we got a phone call. They said, it's going to be on the album, you know. It was all. The video was the fun, you know, breaking the walls down between black and white and just having a good kick-ass time. All right, well, let's have a look at that video now. This is Run DMC and Aerosmith, and this is Walk This Way. Mm -hmm. Run DMC and Aerosmith, as if you didn't know, and Walk This Way. Now, of course, what a lot of people don't realize, our younger viewers anyway, is that, that Walk This Way, of course, was uh, an original track by you from your Toys in the Attic album, which is way back in 1975, I think. Way, 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 way back. Yeah. Do you actually, do you have a, a, a favorite version? Do you still prefer the original, or do you think the new one's a good, good yeah, go at it? Th this was fun. It's like you were saying, a lot of people, a lot of the hardcore fans like to take the piss out of it, you know, but uh, all in all, it was fun to do. You know, like I said, we broke down the walls. It's great when you watch it back. And if they don't like it, well, the hell are we? <laughs> you know, I could see, I could see if we went out and, and, and incorporated LL Cool J and a bunch of other people to help us on our record, you know what I mean? But, you know, like, just listen to Hard Stun Time on a new record, and that's like, you know, it shows we haven't... I mean, we do that well, too, you know? Right. Just another piece. Because, I mean, well, I mean, way back in the days before anybody had ever heard of Run DMC, I mean, you boys were selling millions and millions of albums all over, all over America and the world, weren't you? In fact, it, there's a lot of wild stories about you from those days, one of which I wanted to ask you about. Apparently, back in 76 or 77 in America, when you were touring stadiums you all used to have separate dressing rooms and you were all picked up by a limousine and driven to the stage is that true well, only in the big shows <laughs> <laughs> one limousine each of course you well, know. right right i mean i noticed you didn't get a limousine down from the, the dressing room down to the set no, today that's okay you know we've come a bit of a way since then it's like you know whoever had the designer drug for the evening you know didn't want the other person to know about it but uh but, like I said, that was a long time ago, and this is now. Right, right. The, the, but there are some terribly funny stories from it. Apparently, you used to earn a million dollars a month just from your shows. Is that right? God, it's, yeah, I wish. Oh, really? I bet it wasn't far from that. Well, our managers did. I don't know so. what we made, you know? So, uh, yeah, there's some good stories. For Do you see the band is completely different now from the way it was in the 70s? I mean, it's the same people, but is it a different operation? It feels days? to me like it was when we first did, came out with the first couple of records. Like, the Done With Mirrors record felt to me like the first... Aerosmith record, and now the, the permanent vacation is like, it's making a natural progression, you know. It feels, it feels like that. All right, all right. Now, we haven't had any of the new album on the show yet, so let's have a look at the first single from that album. This is Aerosmith and Dude Looks Like a Lady. Dude Looks Like a Lady, the brand new single by Aerosmith, and that there was the slightly edited version of the track. Right, boys, what are we missing? What didn't we see there? A bit of tail feathers. <laughs> And there's a nice shot where it goes, turn the other cheek, dear, and she, uh, the cameraman comes zooming up to her, grabs her leather uh, skirt, and rips it off, and she's got a G-string on, a crack, but there's, a, there's an Aerosmith logo on the cheek of her butt, and MTV deems that unnecessary in the States. Well, all I can say is I promise you we'll definitely have it on the show next week, just as soon as we get it. Now, of course, I just said that's the brand new Aerosmith single. There was a time, wasn't there, not so long ago, just a few years ago, when it, it, there wasn't any Aerosmith at all. You left the band in 1980, Joe. Yes. Then there was a whole long period of inactivity. Did, 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 did there, was there a time when you both seriously thought the band would never record and work together again? Well, Stephen had the band going. You know, there was Aerosmith working on records, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, Steve Tyler and Joe Perry, you know. Well, it was band. a major ego thing, you know? It was like... You know, I consider us like the musical lovers, and we had a breakup because of this and that and the other thing. And uh, I think the egos, I always said, I'm going to keep Aerosmith together no matter what. And I got a couple of uh, stand-ins for them, and they worked for about a year. But after, uh, after that, the...
Magic wasn't there, I'd look over and I'd see uh, Jimmy Crespo and, and he looked like Joe and it just wasn't the, the real thing so I got, you know, bummed out and finally... Uh, so who called who? Did you call Joe and say? I don't know why that's so important. Everybody asks that. Who called who? You know what I mean? Who was the one? You I know thought I mean? he was Actually, doing Actually, my Alice manager Cooper. called his manager. And it was, really? You know. He was doing. He was going to do something with Alice Cooper, and I said, "What? How could someone from?" I was going, what am I doing? What am I going to play play with Alice? I mean, Alice is, is great, you know. But I mean, I'm going, this, my band is happening. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, we called, we, we talked, we got together in New York City, and you know. From there on, it was this room, you know? Mm -hmm. Lovers at first bite. All right, okay, now, the, the, this is your second album, second album post-Reformation. It's called Permanent Vacation. One of the things I like about it is it's not really what you'd call strict heavy metal. I mean, you've got a lot of different styles in there. You've got a bit of blues, a bit of country. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, but it's all a la Aerosmith. You know, we've always been that. We've always been real diversified. You know, we've had uh, Train Kept a Roll and Dream On, you know, just the, both sides of it, just to show that we could. All right. All right, now listen, we haven't got another Aerosmith video, but this is something that the boys picked especially. This is Dave Lee Roth and Going Crazy. Ah, we're back, we're back. That was That's Dave right. Lee Roth and Going Crazy. God, we nearly blew it there, didn't we, boys? Ah, That's the fun of it, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> listen, I noticed that you, you picked that David Lee Roth video. You, you fans of David Lee Roth and yeah. Van Halen? And... Yeah. Well, you know, look at me. He's having so much fun in that video that it reads that. You, you know, you watch that, and along with a good song, it's just how he's having a blast, you know. A lot of people says he's, he's being wussy and, and too funny and too cute shaking his butt, but it looks good. I know, it, you, it you, reads well, it reads fun. I'm sure you know exactly what the next question is going to be. There's a, there's a lot of bands around at the moment, people like Rat, people like Motley Crue, even people like, I would say, Van Halen, you know, who came along in the wake of Aerosmith, just when it seemed as if Aerosmith was about to shine to the background a bit. All these other bands came along and looked exactly like you. I mean, is, do you feel they've stolen any of your thunder, or do you feel that now that you're back, you're... You're here to teach them a lesson or anything? It's, it's, yeah. it's funny, all the back. interviews we do, that, you know, you all are more bummed out about it or have, or have more of an attitude about it than we do. It's like, a, you know, it's, yeah, they've, they've grabbed and nicked some stuff from us, but they'll never take the thunder out of Joe Perry. Never take the thunder and the fire out of Aerosmith because we have your Tango El Fuego. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic Twins are on tour again. All right. Well, listen, I'm, you say when you're on tour again. When are you going on tour? And you haven't even played over here for 10 years. When can we expect to see you playing in Britain and Europe? Straight answer now. Uh, we're going to, we, in fact, we talked to our agents this weekend. We are going to try and come over in February, but I know we'll be over in June. I know for sure. June? June. Right. That's when yeah. my birthday is. I'm holding these boys to it. We're going to say goodbye to them in a minute. But before we do, I've got to give you the address caption. So I know absolutely thousands of you are out there waiting to write in. And it's a guest today. It's been a real pleasure meeting these guys at last. And if they don't come back over in June, I'm going to want to know why. Joe Perry, thank you, thank you very much. Good luck with your tour. Thank you. thank you. Steve Tyler, thank you too. All right, the end of another show. Oh, we've had enough anyway. We're off. Keep writing in, keep watching. And if you